Right, so now we've got the Graham Schmidt pr process, uh, which is quite straightforward. Uh, if you understand everything we've done up until now and have a detailed understanding of the theorems, so what we do now is uh, let's uh, let's take a basis, and we're going to construct an orthogonal basis. So we're first going to construct a set of orthogonal vectors. And the set of orthogonal vectors is going to have r vectors in it. It's going to have r vectors in it. Now, remember previously we did a theorem which said that if you've got a set of orthogonal vectors, then that set is going to be, um, it's going to be linearly independent. Now, if, if you have a... Um, if you have a vector space that is that's got, that's r dimensional and you have a set of vectors of r vectors and this uh, set of vectors is linearly independent then um, that set of vectors is automatically going to be a basis by chapter f by the work we did in chapter 4 so all i have to do is i just have to construct a set of vectors um, that is going to be uh, orthogonal and then I just need to make sure that it has got R vectors in it and then automatically it's going to be linearly independent uh, and it's going to be a basis I don't have to check that so first of all what you do is you start off with um, you take the first vector from your basis and you call that your f you call that V1 and then what you do is you take v2 and you let v2 be the following vector. It, uh, first of all, you define uh, your subspace w1 as the span of uh, the uh, v1. So you look at all uh, scalar multiples of v1. And that's your set w1, your subspace. And then what I do is I take the, I take the second vector in my basis and I orthogonally project the second vector in my basis onto this given subspace. Now, by all the previous results we've done, um, projecting u2 onto w1, um, remember that is going to be... I'll sketch again, remember I said uh, the projection of u2 onto uh, w1 um, all right, so what's your U2 vector? Your U2 vector is going to be this red vector. And what you are basically doing is you are going to... Um, you're basically going to project that vector onto the subspace W1. And that is the projection of U2 onto W1. And then a U2 minus that projection, that is going to be it's going to be the vector u2 that i'm going to project onto the subspace uh, that's the orthogonal complement of w1 right which is that vector there all right now um so u2 minus that uh is going to be um it's going to be uh, that vector there, okay, and um, which is now my V2. Now V2 is going to be orthogonal to v, uh, every vector in the span of V1, so it's going to be orthogonal to V1 there. Right, next up we've got our third vector and we're going to construct it in the following way. What we're going to do is we're going to now take the span, our subspace W2, and we're going to make that the span in other words, all the all linear combinations of v1 and v2. So that's a subspace. That's the that's the subspace w2. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to pretty much do the same. Um, we're going to take our third vector in my basis u3, and I'm going to project it onto the subspace w2. I'm going to orthogonally project it therefore I'm going to orthogonally project it there okay and uh, that is going to be that vector there and then u3 minus that vector uh, that is going to be pretty much 
it's going to be that vector there that I'm going to take and uh, U3 and I'm going to orthogonally project U3 onto the orthogonal complement of W2. Okay, which is which is which is that vector there? Okay, uh, so that's that whole vector uh, there. Now, please note that this red vector that I'm talking about it is ortho it is um, it is in the orthogonal complement of the span of V1 and V2. Therefore, it is orthogonal to both V2 and V1. Right, now we can carry this process through. Uh, right up until the end, uh, right until we get to step R. Now step R, we uh, define our um, subspace as the span of V1 up until VR minus 1, okay? So this is now my subspace WR, uh, WR minus 1. Right, so we can we can go and expand this process right up until step R. Same thing, we define um, our subspace as the span of the vectors V1 v, uh, up until VR minus 1. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to take um, the vector UR um, and we are going to orthogonally project it onto this uh, subspace that we've defined. Right, so we're going to orthogonally project it there. Uh, and that that is going to be uh, that is going to be that uh, vector there. And to get this whole vector uh, VR, um, we are going to uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, orthogonally project it on the orthogonal complement. So again, we're going to do that. And orthogonally project it onto that uh, there. And that red vector we have there is this vector. Now, um, this vector VR, again, it is going to be orthogonal. It's going to be in the orthogonal complement of this subspace. Uh, and therefore, it's going to be orthogonal to each one of these vectors. So it's going to be orthogonal to each one of the preceding vectors. So basically, what I've done here is I have shown that... Um, I've shown that each pair of my newly defined vectors uh, is is orthogonal. Uh, they're orthogonal to one another. So this newly constructed set is going to be an orthogonal set of vectors, and and there's going to be there's going to be r vectors. There's going to be r vectors. Right, so just going back to the notes, just we just need to uh, basically make sure that these are, uh, they are distinct. Um, we just need to make sure that they are distinct vectors. For example, yeah, if you take v1 equals u1, can v1 be equal to uh, uh, can v1 be equal to u2? Well, if v1 um, is equal, if v1 is equal to v2 then it's going to mean that u1 is going to be equal to u2 minus that where v1 is u1. Right, and that's going to imply that um, I can express u1 as a linear com or as a scalar multiple of u2. And that's going to contradict the fact that it's going to contradict the fact that uh, this is a linearly independent set. Okay, uh, the same thing if you look at V3. Um, if V3 is equal to V1, um, if that's equal to V1, then again, um, here you've got a vector from the basis. V1 is a vector from the basis. And V2 is uh, also essentially from the basis, which is the, these, this vector and that vector. And then you're going to have a situation that V1 is a linear combination of, um, or rather, um, it's going to imply that U1, uh, which is equal to V1, is going to be a linear combination of U3 uh, U, uh, and U2, which is, again, a contradiction, uh, because um, it is a... Uh, this is a linearly independent set, 
Uh, also, again, V3, if V3 is equal to V2, um, if V3 is equal to V2, then again, you've got a, um, uh, you get that U2 is again going to be a, a linear combination um, of, uh, it's going to be a linear combination of U1, uh, which, uh, it's going to be a linear combination of vectors within the basis, which again is a contradiction. So uh, you can form a general argument and just see that these are all, if you, if you go to step R, you will you would have constructed um, R distinct vectors, and an uh, in in a, 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 a in a subspace with dimension R. If you've got any set of con if you've got any set with R vectors in it, and that set is linearly independent, then it is automatically going to be a basis. And remember these R vectors that I've constructed. Um, they that's an orthogonal set. And an orthogonal set of vectors is going to be linearly independent, so it's going to be a basis. And then again, we can we can turn these v's, uh, the set of v's, we can turn it in a um, in an orthonormal basis uh, by just a, a dividing by the norm of each vector, uh, and that will form an um, uh, that will form an orthonormal basis. Right. So, as an example, uh, I'm the notes in, in the notes that do this example. So, I'm going to leave that for self-study. So, in this example, um, you given m22 again with the inner product, uh, given by that uh, operation there. Uh, we did the example earlier with a projection, and then they want us to apply the Graham-Schmidt process to this basis, um, so that. Uh, the new basis that you form is an orthogonal uh, basis. I said in the notes they give the calculations there, so go and work through that. I want to do the next one as an example, uh, which is the following problem. Right, so we have this example here. Let P2 uh, be the uh, set of all polynomials of degree at most 2. And uh, this is how we take the inner product. We calculated um, uh, p in the point 0 multiplied with q in the point 0, p in the point 1 multiplied with, with q in the point 1, and p in the point 2 multiplied with q in the point 2. And then they ask us to apply the Graham-Schmidt process to this basis um, to uh, obtain a new basis that is orthogonal uh, relative to the given inner product. Right, so let's um, label our um, vectors u1, u2, and u3 respectively. And now we're going to apply the Graham-Schmidt um, process to uh, construct a uh, to construct an, a set well, an orthogonal uh, basis. Right, so we're going to start with uh, first of all, we're going to let uh, let v1 be uh, the vector u1 which is 1 in this case and let's define uh, w1 as the span of the vector v1 then we are going to set my second vector v2 as uh, the vector u2 uh, minus the proje orthogonal projection of u2 uh, onto the uh, subspace w1. And according to my previous uh, theorem, although according to the gram schmidt process and all the other theorems, uh, we can replace that with u2 minus the projection of u2 on w1. And that we worked out as as that quantity there, right? So we need to go and determine the um, the inner product of u two with v one and the norm of v one. Okay, now to determine the inner product, uh, remember uh, we define the inner product as um, that 
quantity there. So we take P in the point 0 and Q in the point 0. And we take P in the point 1 and Q in the point 1 and P in the point 2 and Q in the point 2 and we uh, write that sum of the products. Okay, so we're going to do the same here. Uh, remember we are calculating this here. So we're going to take V1 in the point 0 and then we're going to take U2 in the point 0 and then V1 in the point 1 and then U2 in the point 1 and then V1 in the point 2 and U2 in the point 2 and uh, V1 being U1 uh, that uh, and U1 being 1 implies that all three of those values are the same and then u2 in the point 0 is 1, u2 in the point 1 is 2 and u2 in the point 2 is 3. Right, get taking that information and then multiplying um, v10 with um, u20 we get 1 times 1 then we multiply uh, v11 uh, with a point U21 uh, and we get that and then we get um, that and multiplied by that okay so we get the inner product of U2 with V1 and then we need to find the uh, norm of V1 squared uh, so that is going to be the norm of v one. Uh, the norm of v one squared is going going to be the inner product of v one with itself. Okay, and that's going to be v one in the point one multiplied by v one in the point one plus v one in the point zero times v one in the point zero plus v one in the point two times v1 in the point 2 and that is equal to 3 right so that then becomes um, we know what u2 is right u2 is 1 plus x so u2 is 1 plus x 1 plus x and uh, right we calculated u2 v1 as 6 minus, um, divided by the norm of that squared which is 3 and uh, v1 the function v, uh, v1 was uh, it's the function u1 right so we got uh, 1 there and uh, basically that's going to then imply that we have that our function is then uh, x minus 1. Okay, so that is v2. Okay, next up we let w2 now be the span of v1 and v2. Previously defined v1 and v2. And then we know that the vector v3, we define that as uh, the third vector u3 minus, uh, we take the projection of u3 onto the subspace uh, w2. And we know from previous theorems, we know what this term is. That term is simply uh, this um, linear combination. Okay, and now pretty much we are just going to have to work that out separately, that out separately, that and that. And for in order for us to do this, we need to uh, determine the following. Okay, so uh, we take uh, we take v two, and uh, what did we work v two out as? Right, so remember that we worked V2 out as the function um, x minus 1. So V2 in the point 0 is going to be minus 1. V2 in the point 1 
is going to be 0 and V2 in the point 2 is going to be 1. Okay, there we go. Right, and then what did we, uh, what was U3? U3 is this function here, 3x squared. 3x squared in the point 0 is 0. 3x squared in the point 1 is 3. And 3x squared in the point 2 is 3 times 2 squared, which is 4, which is 12. Okay, so we've calculated that. And uh, now we need to calculate these inner products. Right, so we get those three values there. Okay, so how do we how did we calculate this? Um, you take you yeah you take um, well first of all we can quickly go and determine this um, uh, u three inner product with v two is you multiply this with this, then you add it to this multiplied by that. And then you add that to this multiplied by that. Okay. Um, so that's going to be 12. Okay. Then uh, we're going to work this out. Now we'll go back to V1. What is V1 again? I said V1 is this function. Right. So that's easy to calculate. So it's U3 in the point 0 multiplied by v1 in the point 0 which is 1 okay so it's going to be 0 times 1 plus u3 in the point 1 times v1 in the point 1 which is 3 times 1 plus u3 in the point 2 which is 12 multiplied by v1 in the point uh, uh, 2 which is 1 Okay, so that's going to be 12, uh, that's going to be 12 plus 3, which is 15. Okay, and then the last one is we need to calculate the inner product of V2 with itself. So that's going to be minus 1 times minus 1 plus um, uh, 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1. Okay, right, so we work those respective values out. And plugging it in back, we get right. So V three is now. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be U th U three. Okay, minus. We calculated that as. Okay, remember that uh, the nor the norm of V one squared. We calculated that as three. Right. So we calculated that as three. Minus, we calculated U3 with V2 as 12. And we calculated uh, the norm of V2 squared as 2. V2. Okay, so basically we're working with U3 minus 5V1 minus 6V2. Right, and that is U3. We, calcu uh, uh, we calculated V2 as, as the function x minus 1. Uh, and U3 we said is, uh, U3 we said is 3x squared. So U3 we said is 3x squared. And we said V1 is, um, we, cal we said V1 is the function 1. Right, so we can replace that with 1. Okay, so that becomes then. Right, so that's what V3 is. Now throwing that all together, uh, we can then form, um, we can form the, the orthogonal, um, the set of orthogonal vectors or the orthogonal basis. Okay, and that is therefore going to become, uh, throwing all that information together, 
uh, we're going to have that um, final basis is going to be pretty much it's going to be this polynomial the one we just worked out v3 uh, then it's going to be v1 which we calculated as 1 and it's going to be v2 which we calculated as x minus 1 right next up we've got theorem 6.3.6 .6. Uh, it says that if W is a finite dimensional inner product space, then every orthogonal set of non-zero vectors in W can be un enlarged to an orthogonal basis for W. Right, so let's take a set S of orthogonal um, vectors in W. Right, now we know that a set of orthogonal vectors is always going to be linearly independent. We proved that in the beginning of the lesson. Now, also, what you can do is you can uh, form a subspace. Uh, right, we can let the subspace, let's call it W1. Uh, we can let that be the subspace formed by the span of the vectors in S. Okay, and right, so to make that S set a basis, uh, remember S is linearly independent so the plus minus theorem says we can just add vectors to S vectors that are not in the span right so if if you take the, if you take uh, V and you let's say V is not in this uh, V is not in the span of S uh, then we know we can um, we can go and um, right then we can define uh, basically um, we can take the projection um, we can take the projection of V onto the subspace W1 now what I what you can do after this is um, the, the, you know you, you're using the um, you're using the Graham Schmidt uh, technique right process so um, you can define that uh, projection of V onto the subspace W1 um, and you can call uh, the new vector, call it V1. And V1 is basically, um, it's basically V minus the projection of V onto the subspace W1. Now V1 is going to be orthogonal to every one of these vectors v1, v2 up until vr. So um, so then you can you can basically take s and um, yeah you can put um, within s you can put this new v1. Okay, and v1 will be orthogonal to every vector in s. So again, you've got an orthogonal set of vectors, uh, S prime, and S prime is still going to be linearly independent. Okay, so you can you can basically carry this process through. Uh, you can you can then pick another vector uh, that's not in the span of S prime, and uh, you can then follow the same procedure and use it to construct a, another vector that's orthogonal to every single vector in S prime. You can carry this process through until you get to your basis. And all you need to get to your basis is you just need to have um, a, you just uh, if, if your um, if W uh, has dimension n then you just need n, vector, uh, n linearly independent vectors to have a basis, orthogonal basis. So that is the technique for doing that. Okay, so you can use the Graham Schmidt. Um, uh, you can use that Graham Schmidt method and just keep adding orthogonal vectors to the set, extending it. And then every, again, every orthonormal set in W can be enlarged to an orthonormal basis for W. Again, the same argument applies. 
if you have an orthonormal set, it means it's a set of orthogonal vectors that all have norm 1. And then you can just, again, um, take vectors, a vector that lies outside of the span of, of, of this orthonormal set S. And again, you use the Graham-Schmidt method to basically uh, take a construct an orthogonal vector using this, one, uh, this vector that you chose to be outside of the span uh, in exactly the same way by taking its projection. And then once you've gotten that vector, you just normalize it. You divide it by its norm. And that will eventually form an orth orthonormal basis. So using this knowledge, let's look at the following example. You take R3 under the Euclidean inner product. And what they want me to do is they want me to extend that set of two vectors uh, to an orthogonal basis. Now you can quickly check. Um, if you take the inner, um, remember the Euclidean inner product is now the traditional dot product. So um, if you take the dot product of those vectors there, uh, you get zero. Okay, so those two vectors are orthogonal. So we're going to apply theorem 6.3.6, .6, the first, uh, we're going to apply this little um, section. This is my set that I need to extend. So what was the procedure? We take a vector, we choose a vector that's outside of the span of that set. And again, that is a linearly independent set. So let's choose a vector that's outside of the span of that set. Right, so the vector 111 is outside the span of that set. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this vector to construct a vector that will be orthogonal to both these two vectors. And I do the Gram-Schmidt, um, I use the Gram-Schmidt um, method. Right, so what, what we can do is um, we can let u be the vector 1, 1, 1 then uh, what we do is uh, also define uh, we define W as the the span of um, the the set of these two vectors right Okay, now if you look at the projection, you're going to project this vector uh, onto that uh, onto that subspace. Well, in in actual fact, let let us rather uh, write it like this. We are going to define a new vector. Uh, we're going to call it W and we're going to let W be the new vector which is going to be the vector U minus that projection of U onto W. Right, so let's do the calculation. Okay, so we know that the projection of U on W is going to be uh, the um, the inner product of U with V1 uh, divided by the norm of V1, and I'll explain. I'll define V1 in just a moment, um, and then the inner product of U with V2 divided by uh, V2, the norm of V2 squared. Right now, um, right there's V1 and V2. Okay, so let's take the dot product of U with V1, and what was U again? Um, we said U is the vector 1, 1, 1. So the dot product of um, 1, 1, 1 uh, with 1 minus 1, 1 um, is going to be 1. So it's uh, 1 times 1 plus 1 times minus 1 plus 1 times 1, which is 1, okay? Uh, then the norm of V1 squared, what is the norm of V1 squared? It is basically 1 
squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared or 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 1 squared uh, which is basically 3 and then again what is the norm of V2 the norm of V2 is going to be uh, minus 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared which is 4 so it's 4 plus 2 which is 6 right okay and then let's look at the inner product of u with v2. So it's 1, 1, 1 dot product with v2. So it's minus 1 plus 1 uh, plus 2, which is 2. Okay. Okay. So putting that all together, uh, that's a third v1 plus 2 over 6 uh, v2. And that v1 we know is... Uh, 1 minus 1, 1, and V2 is minus 1, 1, 2 thirds. Okay, and uh, basically now that we know what that all of that is, um, we basically have that, that then becomes, um, that becomes uh, 0, 0, um, 1. And going back here, we have then calculated u. Uh, well, we said u is 1, 1, 1, and we calculated this projection of u onto w. Um, we calculated that as 0, 0, 1. Okay, so it's 0, 0, 1. And so that is going to be 1, 1, 0. Okay, so this is my vector w. Okay, right, so we can take our set and extend it. We can make it, uh, we can go and add my vector w to it, and we calculate it uh, 1, 1, 0. Okay, now this is a set of coordinality 3. Uh, it's got the same number of vectors as the dimension of R3. R3 has dimension 3, and that is a... Um, that's an orthogonal set of vectors, so therefore it must be linearly independent. And therefore it is an orthogonal basis. Okay, next we're up we've got another um, application of the Graham-Schmidt uh, method. And that's called QR decomposition. Um, so if A is a, uh, an M by N matrix with linearly independent column vectors, then we can factor A as uh, Q times R, where Q is an M by N matrix and uh, with orthonormal column vectors. In other words, the column vectors are all orthogonal and uh, they have norm 1. And R is an N by N invertible upper triangular matrix. Okay, now if Q is an M by N matrix with um, orthonormal column vectors, it means that if I multiply Q's transpose with Q, it's going to be the N by N identity matrix. Now, why is that? Uh, because remember, in Q transpose, the uh, rows are my columns. So essentially, if I multiply Q transpose with Q, I'm going to multiply each time for each entry, I'm going to multiply... Um, a column vector, uh, I'm, I'm essentially going to multiply a row of QT, which is going to be a column, um, a column vector um, of Q with a column vector of Q. And what happens if I multiply a column vector of Q with a column vector of Q? Um, that is essentially, uh, it's similar to, it's the dot product that I'm taking, which is an inner product. And uh, remember, we said the, the vectors, the columns of Q are orthonormal. So what that is going, the column vectors being orthonormal, it means they are um, have norm one and they are orthogonal. So if I multiply, if I want the first, the entry of the first row in the first column of Q transpose times Q, I'm going to take the first, it's essentially the uh, first column of Q, multiply a uh, dot product with the first column of Q, and uh, that is going to be the norm um, of that vector squared, which is going to be 1. 
Now if I look at the entry in the first row in the second column, it's going to be the uh, first column of Q multiplied by the, um, the second uh, column of Q. And those two vectors, uh, that is going to be a dot product between uh, those vectors and that's going to be zero because um, the vectors are orthogonal. So you're only going to get ones on the diagonal and the zeros you're going to get elsewhere because the zeros uh, is where the index, the ith index is not the same as the jth index and then you're going to get zeros because the vectors are orthogonal. And on the diagonal you're going to get the indices are the same and there you're going to get the norm squares of your columns. Uh, vectors. So that is each and every time going to be one. So you're going to get the uh, identity matrix here. Right now, um, remember now we want to show that we can we can basically solve for a as q times r for some r where r is a invertible upper triangular matrix. So if that is the case, um, all I uh, have to do to get this this r is I have to, um, if I multiply A on this side with Q's transpose, uh, and I multiply on the left there with Q's transpose, I get that, and that, th that becomes the identity matrix, and you then you're left with R. So essentially, uh, you need to find out what this Q's transpose looks like uh, f uh, for me to get R. Right, so the procedure works as follows. So what you have is the matrix A, um, the column vectors, um, they are, um, we say that they are linearly independent. Okay, now how am I going to construct this matrix Q? What I'm going to do is I'm going to construct Q by taking these column uh, vectors of A. Now they are linearly independent. Right, these column vectors. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use these vectors. I'm going to use these column vectors to construct a new set of vectors. And this new set of vectors is going to be an orthogonal set. And how I know how to do that. I can use the Gram-Schmidt process. To convert v1, v2 up until vn, I uh, can convert it into a new set of vectors, uh, which I'm uh, column vectors, which are going to be uh, they're going to be orthogonal, and therefore they're going to still be linearly independent. I'm going to convert them, and I'm going to I'm going to have a new set of column vectors. Right, this is a, a new set of um, orthogonal. Uh, column vectors, and then I'm going to use that to construct my uh, my matrix Q. Okay, so now we've constructed a new, using the Gram-Schmidt uh, process, we've constructed a new set of orthogonal column vectors. Now we can uh, make them all unit vectors, and so we can make them orth um, orthonormal. But I just want to make a very important point because we're going to need this. Uh, going, uh, let's go back to the Graham Schmidt um, uh, process uh, for a short while. Okay, so um, what I want you to uh, uh, see is like let's look at the vector v two. Uh, by definition, the way we define v two, v two is going to be orthogonal to v1 okay so v2 is going to be v2 is going to be orthogonal to u1 now if i look at v3 um, we, uh, v3 is going to be orthogonal to v1 and v2 right so um, the inner product of v3 with v2 is going to be zero okay and uh, also, uh, we know that the inner product of V3 uh, with um, V1 uh, is also going to be 0. Okay, so basically um, V3 is going to be, um, uh, it, 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 it's going to be orthogonal to uh, U1 and 
it must also be orthogonal to uh, it must also be orthogonal to u2 and why is that because if you take yeah if you take the orthogonal if you take the um, if you take the inner product there of v3 with v2 you're going to uh, replace v2 with that whole term there and because v3 is orthogonal to v1 um, it means that uh, on the right hand side uh, that term is going to fall away and you're going to get that uh, you're going to be left with v3 in a product with u2 uh, which is also going to be zero. So basically, v3 is is orthogonal. V3 is orthogonal to both u1 and u2. You know, if you look at v4, v4 is going to be orthogonal to u1, u2, and u3. If you look at v5, v5 is going to be orthogonal to u1, u2, u3, and u4. You can go up until VR, and VR is going to be orthogonal to U1, U2, up until UR minus 1. Alright, so basically U2 is going to be orthogonal to V1, U3 three is going to be orthogonal to V2 and V1, and in general UN is going to be orthogonal to V1 up until VN minus 1. So now we can take these u vectors and uh, normalize them. So we can convert uh, um, that uh, those u vectors to an orthonormal set of column vectors, u1 prime, u2 prime, up until uh, un uh, prime. And now we form our matrix. All right. So Q's transpose is going to be the matrix with rows. Um, the rows are going to be uh, u1, uh, u2, up until un prime, all primes. Okay. There we've got our two matrices, and what happens now if we take the matrix QT T and we multiply that with A? So if we take the product of the two, uh, we can go and see what this looks like. What is it going to look like? Okay. Right, so basically the first entry in the first row is going to be the, uh, it's going to be the first row here multiplied by the first column there. So essentially uh, you can write that as um, it's going to be the intern, uh, it's going to be the uh, inner product of um, product of u1 prime with uh, v1. Right, uh, then the second, uh, let's look at the entry in the, let's look at the entry in the second row in the first column. So it's basically going to be se a second row first column. Okay, now again, that is going to be, um, it's going to be U2 uh, in, a, uh, in a product with a V1. Now guys, remember, that's going to be zero, right? All right, so uh, that, it, that takes care of that. And then basically what you're going to do is you can go and again do that until you get there to the end and you're going to basically multiply that with the first uh, row and again that is going to be uh, you're going to get a zero there okay okay and then uh, we get our uh, basically our upper triangular matrix, which in this case is the matrix R that we're interested in. Right, okay, the procedure goes as follows. You take the matrix A, you make sure it's got linear, linearly independent column vectors. And then what you do to these column vectors, linearly independent column vectors, you apply the Graham-Schmidt method. 
and uh, you produce an ortho or normal set of vectors. You first produce a set of orthogonal vectors and then you normalize them to create an orthonormal set. And then you form your, um, uh, your matrix uh, Q transpose by pretty much taking the, the, the rows um, as these column vectors. And then you pretty much, um, you, if you multiply that matrix with the matrix A, you are going to get this, um, this upper triangular matrix. And this is going to be an invertible matrix because these entries here on the diagonal are going to be non-zero. And you can look at the Gram-Schmidt method and uh, work those inner products out and you'll see that you'll get uh, non-zero uh, vectors. Um, specifically because you chose these vectors to be non-zero. Okay, so it, perhaps it's appropriate to just illustrate this with, with an example. Um, if we go to this example here, first of all, if you investigate the matrix B, first of all, if you investigate the matrix B, one will see there that um, the, uh, the columns of the matrix, uh, they're not linearly independent. Um, so, therefore, I cannot use this QR decomposition. Um, because if you go to this QR de decomposition, one will see that um, the, the column vectors have to be linearly independent. Let's look at ma the matrix A. Uh, let's check if the column vectors are linearly independent. Right, so taking the matrix A, uh, one can just uh, look at the, um, the, uh, the, the column space, uh, find a basis for the column space of A, and uh, you can reduce the matrix uh, uh, such that you get um, this matrix here, and the leading ones correspond to the vectors uh, that are going to form a basis for the column space. Um, Right, and there are three vectors. So these three vectors form a basis for the column space and therefore they must be linearly independent. So therefore you take your, your columns of A and you label them V1, V2 and V3 respectively. Now we're going to apply the Gram-Schmidt method and we're going to convert these column vectors into an orthonormal uh, set of, of uh, column vectors. So our new vector, uh, first new vector, is, um, is the vector u1. And we're going to set that equal to v1 and let w1 be the span of v1. Then we're going to set u2 as our second vector. And it's going to be defined by v2 minus the projection of v2 onto the subspace w1. And that is equal to V2 minus uh, this whole term here, by definition. So we need to find the we need to find the inner product of these two vectors of V2 with uh, U1 or V1. So if we go back, call the vectors V1 and V2, right? So if you take the the uh, dot product because we're working with the Euclidean inner product here. Uh, what is the what's the dot product between these two vectors? It's zero times one plus two times one plus zero times one. So it's going to be two. And then what's the norm of v one squared? It's going to be one squared plus one squared, which is two. Okay. So therefore we can replace that with um, with the following. Okay, there we go. And what was V2 and V1 respectively? Right, so we can then uh, go and calculate that. And that is going to be... You can then calculate uh, U2 as V2 minus V1. And if you go back, um, uh, V2 minus... Uh, v2 minus v1 is 1, uh, 2 minus 1 which is 1, and 0 minus 1 which is minus 1. Right, now we set uh, w2 as the span between 
uh, the vectors u1 and u2 that you worked out. Remember u1 is we worked u, we set u1 equal to that vector there and u2 equal to uh, this um, vector here. Okay, uh, now we set u3 as the vector uh, uh, v3 uh, minus the projection of v3 onto w2. So that you can replace then that with uh, v3 minus the inner product of v3 with u1 divided by the norm of um, u1 squared times u1 minus v3's uh, inner product with u2 divided by the norm of u2 squared times u2. Right, now if you take what u2 is defined as and v3, if you take the inner product of uh, v3 um, with uh, u2, which is this term here, then again it's going to be um, 3 times 1 plus 1 times 1 uh, plus 1 times minus 1, which is 3, divided by the norm of u2 squared, which is 1 squared plus 1 squared plus minus 1 squared, which is 3. Right, so you... you um, uh, so you can replace that with... Right, so we replace that with 3 over 3 u2, then taking the, the product of, um, of v3 with u1, um, uh, v3 with u1 is what what is the vector v th, um, v3 again? Uh, we calculated v3 as uh, sorry, we calculated um, well we we don't have to calculate it. we uh, we know what v3 is and we know what uh, u1 is. Okay, so taking the inner product of that, that's going to be three times zero uh, plus one times one plus one times one. Um, so you're going to replace that with two, and then the norm of um, the norm of u1. Remember, u1 is v1. Uh, the norm of u1 is one squared plus one squared, which is two. So you're going to replace that with two uh, u1. All right. So throwing all that info together, there we go. Um, multiply, um, uh, um, sub doing the substitution. Uh, and then you can then basically go and work out that vector. Right, okay, so there we've got it. Okay, now there are my three vectors I worked out. Now I need to just normal, um, normal, normalize them. So working out the norm of u1 and, um, and then dividing by the norm. The norm is uh, square root of 2. And so I divide the vector by its norm, and I get uh, u1 prime. Then u2, I work out the norm there. That's uh, square root of 3, and I divide by the square root of 3. I get u2 prime. And then the last one is I divide by the norm, which is 2 squared plus 1, uh, minus 1 squared plus 1 squared, um, which is 6, the square root of 6. And so I get those three respective um, vectors. All right, then taking my vectors and making those my rows of my transpose. Uh, so that is the first row. Okay, that's the first row. Um, uh, this is the second row. That's the second row. And that's the third row. Okay. Now, again, multiplying that with the matrix A, we then get, uh, which is then the upper uh, triangular matrix. Right, so that is the um, QRD composition uh, using the Graham-Schmidt.